Hello, first of all, let me thank you for taking this course. On this course, I'm going to teach you how to create loading animations in Adobe After Effects. We're going to be creating everything in After Effects, so the first thing, of course, is to create open the software, and when you do that, this is going to happen. Now we're going to create a new composition, and to do that, we're going to click on that, on that little uh, composition icon on the bottom, right there on our project window. And we're going to name it Sample, because this is going to be the comp where we're going to be sampling all our animations. Make sure that you make it 800 by 600 pixels, that your frame rate is 30, and the duration for now is fine to leave it, leave it in 60, and change the background color to white. Now that you have this open, we're going to create our comp where our first animation is going to be. So I'm going to click again on that icon, and I'm going to change the width and height to 100 by 100. The rest of the settings are going to be the same. So just press OK when you have all them matching your sample comp. And this is the comp where we're going to be working, creating our first animation. So we're going to be creating our animation based on basic shapes. And everything is going to be created here. So we're going to go to our tools panel. And probably by default, you're going to see the rectangle tool. If you click and hold that click, you're going to see the rest of the shape tools. Now find the ellipse tool and click on that one to select the ellipse tool. Now just click. And if you see when I click and drag, I can make an ellipse that is from different shapes. But what I really want is to create a circle. So to do that, I'm going to press while dragging shift. And you can see that that is constraining the proportions. I'm going to create a circle. And here on the top, you can see that I have my stroke width and also my color. I'm going to change this to 3. And you could also change that value if you go to your shape layer, find the ellipse tool, find the stroke, and change right there the stroke width to 3. We're going to be also changing the color, so you could do it here or right there on the top. Click on that one, and in the case of this ellipse, we're going to change it to a light gray color, because this is going to be on the background. And now we can change the size to our ellipse by clicking here on ellipse path and then size. And let's change this value to 55. Now that I have it like this, I want to make sure that my ellipse is centered. So to do that, I'm going to go to my align window. You can find it right there. But if you don't have it, you can go to window align and get any of the windows that I have here. Now make sure that you're aligning to your composition and do the horizontal and vertical alignment. Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to bump this stroke to 4 because I want this to be the base. And up next what I'm going to do is copy and paste my ledger to create a copy. So just press Ctrl C and Ctrl B on your keyboard and you're going to get a copy. Now I don't want to accidentally mess around with my first ledger so I'm going to lock it by going here on my ledgers, find the lock icon and just click on that square right there on my shape ledger number 1. Now on my shape layer number two, I want to change some things. I want to make the tick three on three points and then change the color to a blue one or whatever color you prefer. This could be the color of your project. Maybe you are designing this for a website or an application and you already have a palette defined. So pick whatever color choose you or you could find a nice blue green color. Now if I zoom in, I'm doing this with my mouse just scrolling my, my mouse wheel, you can see that I can get um, closer and farther. Now that I have picked my color, what I'm going to do is begin the animation. So what I want is that blue circle to fill the shape. So I'm going to open my layer, go here to Add, and then find Trim Paths. I'm going to click on that and you can see that if I scroll on my timeline, nothing has happened. But if I go here to trim paths, I get some other options. I have a start and an end. And if I move the end from 100 to something lower, you can see that that effect that I'm looking for is, is happening. And as you probably know, and if you don't, everything that has a stopwatch in Adobe After Effects, you can keyframe it, meaning that you can animate it. So we're going to do that with this value, the end one. I'm going to go to and change it to zero so you don't see any more that blue line. 
and I'm going to click there on the stopwatch to add a keyframe. Now I'm going to go further on my timeline, maybe around 30, and change that value to 100. Now if I go to the beginning and press my spacebar, I can preview my animation. And you can see that something is happening. Probably not exactly what I want, but we're getting there. And now I want this to fill and then kind of make the full circle and go again back to being all gray or just showing the back. So to do that, I'm going to play around also with the start value. And when I click on the stopwatch to add a keyframe, and let's change the value to zero. Then go a little bit further on the timeline, maybe around 33, and change and change it to... I'm actually seeing that this is happening too slow. So to change that, I'm going to simple change my last keyframe to Terry. And then move around the other keyframes. So it's on 25. And you can see this is happening just as I wanted it. And after frame 25, nothing happens. So that's not something I want. So I'm just simply going to go to my 25 frame and press N. That is going to shrink my work area. I could also do this manually, but you can sh use the shortcut. Now, if I preview my animation, I can see it looping. And if you don't uh, see it looping, you can go to preview, window preview and find this window. And in here I have my shortcut to be the spacebar. And also uh, here on right next to the spacebar, I have a, an arrow indicating that I am looping my, my preview. So make sure that you have it like this, otherwise you're not going to see the loop. I'm going to go back to my composition and see how this is happening. Now I could um, change a little bit these parameters. So if I go and press end and press on this little graph button, I can see the graph as it is. So you can see that right now it's linear because the, the change is linear. But if I hold both keyframes, go right click and go to easy, easy out, you can see how now it's gaining some speed. So I could do the same and click again, on my, select my keyframe, sorry. Right click, keyframe assistance, and this time is ease. Let's do the same with the other keyframes. But you could also use the shortcut F9. Now let's go, you can see how if I preview this, this is actually looking better. And what this is doing is that it's gaining some speed and then losing it right at the end. So the movement is it's actually uh, it's smoother. Now I want to select all my keyframes, go to the last one and press Alt. If I do that while I track, you can see how I'm stretching my keyframes. And I'm doing this because I'm thinking that it was happening too fast. So if I add a little bit more of time, you can see how that is looking better. Now I'm going to go to my ellipse, find my stroke and change the line cap instead of butt cap to round cap. There is going to be some roundness to the, to the blue line. And that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to do it like that. You can scroll around to see what is happening. And I think this is actually looking good. If I uh, remember that the way you're going to see it is just in 100%, I am zooming in a little bit just to be able to see my animation better. Now I'm going to go to my graph and you can see how I have that what I was telling you. It's gaining some speed and if you change, for example, let's say I change it like here and I preview that animation, you can see how that is changing completely. Now it's being so fast. I don't want that. I actually liked how I had it before. Gaining some speed. You could also drag this a little bit so it loses the stat speed a little bit slower. I think that's looking better. You could also see the, the other graph, the start graph. It's right there. And again, you can 
modified it a little bit so it works better as you as you want it so now that I have changed both I can preview my animation and you can see how that is looking smoother I'm gonna go back to my timeline and another thing that you could do is actually leave some space so you can stretch your work area so now it's happening and then you're gonna see nothing for a couple of frames I actually don't like that but if you want to give it a try that's okay and now you can see how your animation is looping now I'm gonna place that in my sample so I'm gonna go back to my sample comp and just drop my comp and now it's right there now you can see that it's stretching the whole timeline but actually after frame 30 nothing is happening and the reason for that is because if I go back to my comp one I can see that after 30 I don't have any animation so I'm just gonna go right click on my work area and trim comp to work area that way, instead of changing the number of, key of frames on my comp, it's going to automatically trim my comp to my work area. Now, if I go back to samples, you can see that after frame 30, I actually don't have anything because comp one is no longer there. I want to loop this. So what I'm going to do is right click on my comp one and go find time and then enable time remapping or press Ctrl R Alt T. Then I'm going to go to the last frame and you can see that Actually, if I go to the last frame, I don't see nothing. And the reason of that is because if I go to my comp one, you can see that actually on frame theory, there is nothing. So let's go back to frame theory and actually make a keyframe by clicking there. And let's delete that last keyframe that doesn't have anything. So now if I go beyond keyframe theory, you can see that I have like an static uh, point as I had in frame theory. So what I'm going to do is add an expression to make this loop and I'm going to go to stopwatch and press alt and if you do that the expression window is going to appear right there on your layers and I'm going to click on this little triangle and find the property and then loop out and you can see how automatically After Effects writes expression for you and now if you preview your animation or go beyond frame theory, you can see how now it's looping just as you want it. And if I go and change my, go in my composition settings, my, the length of my sample, let's say 290, you can see that if I stretch my navigator, I can see that after frame 60, nothing, there's not that layer anymore. So I can just click and drag to make it as long as I need. And it's going to keep looping like forever. So that's not going to be a problem. I'm going to place it around here. And actually, you should always have your comps organized. So you should change the name instead of comp. So right click, rename, and let's change the name to something that we can see. So loading one is going to be this because it's our first loading animation. So in the next lesson, we're going to keep working on our next animation.